Hello, welcome back. To, oh, that was an odd voice break there. Welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic. And uh, yeah, a really interesting puzzle today, or an interesting looking puzzle that is just German whispers, um, but with doublers in. So uh, the German whisper rule is that adjacent values along a line must differ by at least five. So the difference between those would have to make them something like one and six or one and nine, but not two and six. Um, however, there are doublers in this puzzle. So there are nine cells in the grid which count as double their value for the purposes of the lines. And there's exactly one doubler in each row, column and box, and they form a set of the digits one to nine. So we'll ponder that. But um, first of all, unusually today, I am going to do some birthdays. Um, I'll do them in a minute. I, let, let me mention, first of all, coming up on Patreon, it's brilliant. Uh, Demono, and he's a great name in the construction of Sudoku, has now created a, a story, a pretty much full-length story of a Sudoku hunt. And uh, you get to participate. You get to be a character in the story. It's really interesting. We'll be bringing that out on the uh, on the 1st of May in uh, four or five days' time. Do join us on Patreon for that. It's, uh, it's quite an epic. It's certainly the longest piece of work we've produced um, in terms of pages on the channel or Patreon ever. So anyway, it's great, and uh, I think you'll really enjoy it. There are some very peculiar characters in it, I will say that, as well as, as, well as yourself. Um, now, that's coming up on the 1st of May, along to go along with all of the stuff that we have on Patreon. I think all of the videos on solving the Skunk Works Nightmare pack are there now. So do check it out if you wanted clues as to how you were meant to solve some of those very difficult puzzles. Um, I don't think Demono's puzzles are quite as hard, but anyway, we'll see. Um, anyway, loads of stuff on Patreon. There's all of our apps, loads of different types of Sudokus in those. And, of course, um, there's Sven's Sudoku Pad and our catalogue and the Discord server. Check out the links under the video. Um, now, I was going to do some birthdays. So I'm going to start with um, Eric, who wrote to us to wish his wife Dawn a happy birthday today. And... Um, I'm sure Simon will have done these birthdays anyway, but I may as well just round them up today, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Nanju wrote to us to say that his friend Nate's coming round for um, board game night with a group of friends, and he's found out Nate watches the channel, and uh, he wants a surprise shout-out. So, well done. Happy birthday, Nate. Um, probably no chocolate cake, he thinks, but uh, because of the surprise factor. But... A board games evening anyway and then Sudoku videos of course at some point and Summer wrote to us to congratulate her boyfriend Aiden on his 17th birthday and she thinks a homemade Victoria sponge cake should suffice for him well good luck with that maybe it will um, and I, one of the best named patrons we have is Eliza Bennett straight out of the pages of Pride and Prejudice as I'm sure she's heard a million times in her 45 years but this is from uh, Vic her who I think watches the watches the channel with her. They're both Patreons separately, which is brilliant. And um, she lives in London, but nowhere near me, because it's London in Canada. Um, and that brings me on to the reason I'm doing a few birthdays today, because yesterday was Itrio's birthday. Um, Itrio says that they're having some triple chocolate cream cake, and that's great. Um... And that was yesterday. Maybe they finished it off by now. But Simon mentioned to me that if I hadn't done my video yesterday, why didn't I do Itrio's puzzle that had been sent in? Um, and it's this Whisper Doublers puzzle. So I'm doing it today because I'd already done the gas video yesterday. And uh, I'm going to have a go at this Whisper Doublers puzzle today. I, I did read out the rules, but I'm going to get into it now. So I'll just go through the rules again. We've got German whisper lines, which means that the values along the lines that are next to each other must differ by at least five. Nine cells in the grid, however, are doublers, which count as double their value for the purposes of these lines. There's one doubler in every row, every column, and every box, so they could be distributed at a wild guess, 
like that. Wouldn't it be great if that turned out to be the correct um, disposition? And those doublers form a set of the digits one to nine. So do give it a try on um, in our software. Oh, there have been some very odd things happening in our software where answers or filled in or partially filled in grids, either right or wrong, have been coming up. We don't understand what's going on. We put it to Sven, he said that can't happen, but it clearly has been to some people on some devices. Um, we would welcome more information because we don't understand how that's happening at all. Uh, we will fix it if we can, but we don't know what's going on. Anyway, um, I am going to attempt this puzzle now in our software on my machine. I hope you don't get the yours filled in as a result of that. It's, it's very odd. I don't understand what's going on. But let's restart the clock. Let's get cracking. So this line is impossible unless you allow for doublers. The line is impossible, not so much because of column one or column two, but because of this. So I will tell you the three things that normally matter in German Whispers Sudoku, because they may matter in this, or we may have to work out how the doublers work to flout them. So five normally can't appear on a German Whispers line because no other Sudoku digit is within, is, is, has a difference of five or more. Um, secondly, because if you're using normal Sudoku digits and you're not using five, you're using either low ones or high ones, they have to alternate to keep the difference. And then thirdly, four and six are quite difficult to place because normally their neighbors can't see each other. But I have a feeling all of those three things are just shot to shreds because of this doublers rule. We, I did do a puzzle previously where the top row was a full German whisper line and there was a Roggen rule of some sort in that. Was it J. Dyer? I don't know. I'm sorry if I've misremembered who set that puzzle. But I remember having some very confusing thoughts about five in regard to the top row. I think that's where I'm going to start now. So we've got this top row of the grid, and a regular five cannot appear there. Now, in the last, the last puzzle, I thought that five had to be doubled for a long time in that row that had nine green cells in it. Because otherwise, how could it appear? And what I didn't work out was that five could appear next to something doubled to be more than four away from it. Or I, I worked it out in the end, but it took me ages. So at least I can remember that this time. So the way to get five on this line is either to double the five and have it appear next to two low digits, or to double a higher number, because if you double one to four, you haven't got past the difference of five from five. So to double a higher number, six, seven, eight, nine, and have that next to five. Now, where would five be then? Okay, the first thing I'm going to say, it's not much use, but five, five has to be in one of those cells or doubled in the row. And that is because that is because it can't have two neighbors that are genuine. Oh, I don't think it can actually appear in the corners because of this line going round the corner. Both corners. Right. I think we're away here. So five, well, no, I'm absolutely not away. Five is either doubled in this row so that it can appear next to two low numbers or, or one or two low numbers, or it appears next to a doubled high number. However, that can't actually happen, I don't think. Any way you imagine five appearing next to, let's for instance, just put it in the middle here, five next to a doubled nine, the maximally high number. That's fine there, but what do you put here? 
because this isn't allowed to be another doubler because it's in the same row and there is no Sudoku digit that can be next to 5, so that's nonsense. Let's put it on the ends, which I thought might be... Oh, sorry. Which I thought might be possible. Because now 5 is on the end of the thing. But no, because now this can't be a doubler because there's one in the box now. So that doesn't work either. And now I'm thinking that 5 has to be doubled in this row. And I do want to take some time to see... Is that a valid conclusion? It is. It is. Because the way these lines loop round means that there is no position on this line where you can put a digit that can't be next to another regular digit and have it, you know. What I'm trying to say is every cell in this row is next to two Sudoku digits that see each other. That's going to make it quite difficult for four and six to appear in the row. Yeah, hang on. Okay, that's really interesting. So 5 is definitely doubled in this row. I don't know where. It could be anywhere in the row. It has two neighbours. That doesn't stop it being in any cell. However, 4 and 6 are very interesting. No, well, 4 is not very interesting. No, it is very interesting. 4 is going to have to be sandwiched between neighbours of... The doubled 5 in the top row and 9. And I've thought of an exception to that where it might not be. You could have no, oh, 9, 4 and a doubled 8 there. So 4 doesn't have to be next to the doubled 5, in fact. And then somewhere along here you have the doubled 5. So 4 is less interesting, but I think 6 is very interesting. 5 is doubled in this row, so 6 isn't. The only digit 6 can appear next to is 1. Oh, hang on, it can't even appear next to the doubled 4, uh, the doubled 5, because the difference is 4. Ah, but it does exactly this thing that I'm saying with the four. You can put six in a corner. I'm just guessing this corner for now. Next to a one in the top row. It can't be next to five. The doubled five. And it can't be next to a doubled anything else. It would have to be next to a one in the top row. And a doubled cell here, which is going to be seven, eight or nine. And then 5 appears somewhere else in this top row next to next to digits which are from the low digits, next to 1, 2, 3, or 4. Okay, so, right, 6 is at one end of this row. 1 is just inside it. The number just below it is a doubled cell. A doubled high cell. Now, this is sending me looking to these columns. When I first looked at these columns, and sort of not forgetting but ignoring for a second the fact that there's this doubler rule in the puzzle, my first thought was that 5 has to go there in this column and 5 has to go there. And I think we may still find that that's true. But this is just arising out of trying to not put 5 on a green line. 5 would have to be there in this column if they were all genuine digits. Once you've put it there, it can't be here by Sudoku, and if you couldn't put it on this line, it would have to be here. So, well, and obviously that wouldn't work with all genuine digits because you'd end up with a 5 here on a green line. Anyway, that was something I was thinking about, but now I do think it is worth me thinking about... Yes, where does 5 go in this column? I have a feeling it's going to be here. Where does 5 go in this column, given that the doubled 5 is somewhere up here? Well, hang on. Maybe somewhere up here. 5 could be in the opposite corner. Say this was 1, 6, doubled digit. 
I think five could be there. Ah, I'll tell you what we can do in this row now. With a genuine six and a genuine one, right, five is going to now become a high digit in this row. And the high digits are going to be spaced along there. I was hoping not to do orange and blue in this puzzle, but I'm going to do it for now. Uh, the reason I was hoping not to do it was because I was hoping to do sort of green and red for doubled and non-doubled digits. But these must be the low ones. They must alternate. Even doubled five is next to two low digits, so you can't break the pattern here. And that means... That does still mean that one of these ends can be the doubled five. It's really weird. Um, these are definitely from... Well... Well, these are from one, two, three, four, but what were we saying about four? Four can't be in a corner now. Ah, four is going to have to be in between nine and the doubled five somewhere in this row. And it's going to... One, one end of the row is 6, 1. I don't know, maybe it doesn't even help. That is true though. 4 is going to have to be between 9 and the doubled 5. Maybe I should just call it 10. 4 is going to be between 9 and 10. 3 in this row is between two digits. That has to be between 9 and 8. Let me just do an aid memoir of this down here. So th oh, 3 comes between... 9 and 8. 4 comes between 9 and 10. Oh, I can't, can't render that. Um, 10. 2. Well, 2 comes between... I've still got 7 and 6 as high digits. We know that one end of the line is... 6, 1. This is just aid memoir. I'm not filling these in. I'm just trying to understand. And then the other two digits are 7 and 2. But 6, 1 could connect up to 8, 3, 9, 4, 10, 2, 7. Or it could go 6, 1, 7, 2, 8, 3, 9, 4, 10. So I don't know. That doesn't really help. OK, let's go back to the columns. Now, 5 is doubled somewhere in this row. Might be at a corner, but it's somewhere in the row. Where is 5 in this column? Oh, do we, can we alternate in this column? Oh no, if this is the column with the double digit here, that's 6 and this is high. This could be high or low, but... Ah! Oh, I'm getting so confused now. It's the alternation. Once you're past... The trouble is I don't know which side this doubled cell is. Maybe something is telling me. I, I do need to think about this. Because you could go six, doubled nine, and then high again. But that would be three of the high digits. Five cannot be No, five can't be in any of these cells. Pretty sure that's right. Let me just work this one out. Five definitely can't be in any of these cells because it has two neighbours and only one of them can be a doubler. So 5 in this column is definitely in one of these cells. It's not there. 
because either this is a genuine six or it's a genuine high digit. Well, yeah, five, five isn't here. Because it can only be next to nines. They'd both have to be nines. Or I suppose nine, five, and a doubled something. Oh, bother. I'm not really understanding this at all, am I? I just need to figure this one out. So one side or the other, we have six one. Somewhere in the row, we have a doubled five. I think the, the mnemonic stuff, oh, the, sorry, the aid memoir stuff I was doing revealed that that five could be almost anywhere in the row. It has to be a little away from the six, but that's all. Oh, bother. Um, but I need to think about sixes and fours. So, if that's the six... sitting above a doubled high cell. That's what it would have to do. So that would be six. This would be seven, eight or nine doubled. Hey, no, what would these be? Yeah, it does it is, yes, okay. This doesn't work this side of the grid. Okay, got it, got it, got it, got it. Right, let me show you that. If this was the six, this is a doubled seven, eight or nine. Now, it doesn't matter whether this is high or low. We would still need two more genuine high digits as well. Well, if that was high, we would still, yes, we would still need two more genuine high digits alternating down here. On the other hand, this could be low, you're saying, and you're quite right. But then we would need three high digits alternating down here. And in either case, none of them can be five because they're next to genuine digits. And we've got too many high digits in this column either way round. So that is not the six. This is the six side of the grid. OK, that's a one. This is definitely a, a doubled high seven, eight or nine. This is not doubled now. Okay, now I am going to get rid, daringly, of orange and blue. Um, I'm just tidying up some pencil marks just in case. Let's get rid of orange and blue. Let's do red and green, which is my plan for non-clash. Sorry, non-doubler cells is green. Doubler cells are red. Now, somewhere along here, there's a doubled five. So these, these low ones are genuine. Now, it can still be here. I wonder if it's going to have to be here. Now, I've still got to consider the alt... Well, maybe I consider the alternation down here now. No, this is shorter. If that's high... Actually, this cannot be high. That is worth considering this. This is 14, 16, or 18 as a value. So this can be anything from 1 to 9. It's, it's not a doubler, so it, well, it can be anything from 1 to 9 apart from what's in the box. But these alternate. So if this was high... That would be high, and that would be high. None of them could be five. They'd all be... There'd be five highs in the column, and that's impossible. So this is low. Okay, bother. I am, I am going to start flashing these digits because I just need to know what's going on here. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to combine pencil markings of high and low.
and I just feel I need to do that. Those are all high. This is genuine, and that's genuine, so this must be low. Now, what's going on down here? We need two. We can't put five here because it's a genuine digit. It's got two neighbors. We can't put five in any of those cells. Five in this column. It could be here. Could it? No, it couldn't because it would have two genuine neighbors. Five is going to have to be here, I think. Ah, oh, no, wait, that could be doubled five. Oh, hang on, where's five in this column? I don't see how it can be in any of these cells. It's definitely down here. I still think I'm going to end up with fives in those positions. But I have to bear in mind that five could be sitting in this corner. I think it's either in that corner or that corner. Yeah, I'm confident about that. One of those is true. Now, somewhere down here, there's going to be a doubler, though. Well, let's think about 6 and 4. That can't be 6. Six can only be next to one in this column or a doubled high digit again. Ah, oh, it's doing my head in. This is very hard, Itrio. I wonder if Itrio's name suggests that Itrio is from the same place in Sweden where they found erbium, terbium, yttrium, and iterbium. A, a quarry in Utebu, I believe. Um, anyway, stop thinking about that and start thinking about the puzzle again. Gosh, I'm getting nowhere. 20 minutes in, I haven't really got a clue what's going on. I've got a six in a corner. Oh, this is weird, isn't it? Um, actually, hang on, that has to be two, three, or four. This, oh, I suppose it was never going to be six, it's seven, eight, or nine. These are from 1, 2, 3, and 4. That is from 7, 8, and 9. I don't know what's happening there. I need to figure out something about column 1. There must be something available. Five in the top row is worth 10. That's going to be... Well, you've still got seven to place in this top row. Now, seven either has to be here in between a one and a two, or here in between a two and a one. Because those are seven's only possible neighbours in the top row. So seven's in one of those positions, and one of these is a two, therefore. And therefore, that's not a two. Now, four, it's interesting. Four is going to be in one of these. Nine, I said. I think I worked this out on the Aid Memoir. Nine is going to be between... between four and the doubled... No, nonsense. Four, that was it. Four is going to be between nine and the doubled five. But I don't know where that goes. Then three is going to be between nine and the eight. Right, so nine has to be between four and three, so it is in one of these two cells. That, I'm getting that subconscious thinking right. So this is either 5 doubled, 7 or 8. Its value is 7, 8 or 10. It's just not clear cut. Bother. Right, come on. Think about column 1. Something, something in column 1. 
alternation in column 1. What's going on with the alternation in column 1? If we... Ah, oh, I see. You can never break up the alternation by doubling a, high di a low digit and putting it next to another low digit. Is that true? No, that's not true, because you could have... 1 doubled for 2. That really would break it up. I don't know. This is a genuine low digit. So this one... I don't know. This is definitely genuinely low, one, two, three, or four, because that can't be more than ten as a value. So, so where does six go in this column? Let, let's think about that. It can only be next to one or a doubled high digit. But I don't think that keeps it out of any particular cell. Four can only be next to nine or a doubled high digit. I do feel it's hard to get them all in, but it does look possible. Now, alternation. We've got a high value, a low one. This must be a high value. But then you could have another high value. Oh, but that's the problem. There's no point doubling the highs. Because then we get five different high value cells, but one of them could be doubled five if it's at the very top. Yeah, I just cannot see how this is working. I'm sorry. Oh, hang on. Where does 5 go in this row? Oh, that's weird. 5 can't be there because we've pencil marked it into those two cells in box 9. I don't think 5 can be in these cells because it's not a doubled 5. And they have to be next to two neighbours. So they could be next to one doubler but they couldn't be next to another genuine digit. So I think 5 has to be in one of these three cells. Now, I think it could be here with a doubler there. I don't think it can be here, because it's not a doubled 5, and it can't be next to two genuine things. So it's in one of these two. That's weird. Oh, now where is it in column 1? It's not there. I don't think it can be on these cells, because it's not doubled, and it can't be next to two doublers. So it has to be... It can't be here either. It is there in the corner. That's the doubler. Found you. Right. Oh, that's bizarre. Look at that little flip around. Right. Five is in the corner. Acting as a ten. That's the doubled five. Ooh, what does that do for the alternate... No, what does it do for the top row? Let's do that first. Seven now in the top row has to be between one and two, and it's there. And then two's here. And that's not a two. This is a three, four pair. Now, we knew something. Nine went in between the three and the... F no, yes, nine goes in between the three and the four. This must be eight... That's sitting next to 3, not 4, and that's a 4. And there we go, the top row is finished. That's not a 7. This is not a 4. This is worth 10. We're not going to get any more doublers in this column. So these are all genuine digits, so now they have to alternate high, low, high, low, all the way down. This is worth colouring. Look at that. Blue, orange... Blue, because none of them are doublers. Now, what's this? 
This is, well, this is where six goes in the column, isn't it? Now it can't go here. These are all genuine and they're next to genuine things. Six can't go there. Six goes here. Seven goes somewhere between one and two. Yeah, this is mad, but it's... And these are all genuine, because we got that five. So are those. So they go green. One of these is a doubler. Where does four go in this column? These are all genuine. It can... It, oh, it could go here. It's got to go here. It can't go into these cells because it would be surrounded by nine and something that can't double. So four goes here. That's a nine. This is a doubler. A high doubler? Yes, definitely a high doubler from, well, seven or eight because six and nine are gone in the box. So four is next to a value of 14 or 16 there. Five's already been doubled, remember, so it can't can't be a doubled five. Now, these are a seven, eight pair. These are from one, two, three. This touches the seven, whether it's above or below, so it's not the three. This doubler means we can color a lot of green cells like that. We've, oh, we've got a doubler on this green line. We've got a four on that green line, actually. And we've got a nine in one of those cells. Oh, so the four cannot be next to a nine. Now, it can certainly be next to a doubler, but it can't be next to a nine. I don't see how the four can be in either of those cells. Doesn't the four have to be here? The four here, if you put a four here, it would have to be next to a genuine digit on one side, which would have to be a nine. Not possible. Same is true. Ow, oh, bother, it could be a doubled four. Oh. Oh, that's really annoying. Well, I don't think it could be here in this cell I'm in, because if you put a doubled four in there, it would have to be next to digits from one, two, and three. And that would give you too many in the box. <clears throat> is that right? I think that is right. So that's not a four. But... This could be a genuine four or a doubled four, and this could be a doubled four. Ah, so near being able to make a conclusion there. That's really annoying. Right, I don't know what to do about that. I think this might be worth investigating further. But four doesn't have... Wow. If that's a four, it's genuine. No. No, I don't know. I don't know that. Oh, hang on. How is this a four? Oh, if it's doubled, and that could be low, and that could be low. Ah, oh, that's really annoying. Right, okay. I keep rethinking the same things there. Let's look at this thing. I don't know why. Must be having to think about these digits four, five, and six again. So, five can be there. Oh, well, hang on, can it? If you put five. Oh, maybe it must be here. If you were to put five there, then five's now appearing on this line. Five can't be doubled, it would have to be on the end of the line, and it can't be. It would have to be next to a doubled high digit. And then you can't put four on the line. I think that is right. You can't put five here because five can't appear there as well as four. It just puts too much pressure. So that's not a five. One of those is a five. And that is a five. And that has to be next to another doubled high 
digit. And assuming that's right, and this may be the conclusion I've got the least confidence about, but it does feel, I think that logic was right as I expressed it. You can't get a five. Let me just have one quick more think about whether you can get a five and a four on here. You can't, because even if you were to put them next to each other, the, well, they, you can't do that. We're not allowed another doubled five, because we've had one. If you double the four, you can't put it next to five. If you can't put a five anywhere else on the line, yeah, it is right, it is right, that's fine. So this is doubled, and this is high. This is, well, six it could be, six, seven, or eight. So we're getting a lot of these high doubled digits placed. We've still got one more to go. Um, I wanted to say that this is going to be low, but that doesn't necessarily apply annoyingly. Ah, hang on, we've got to put four in this row. Ah, nine's gone. Yes, where's four in the row? I don't think it can be there or there because it's going to be next to two digits, and although one of them could be a high double digit, the other one is not allowed to be nine. Now, four could be here. No, it couldn't, because this is still impossible. This is not doubled, and it's not allowed to be nine. Four is in one of those two cells in the row. I bet it's there. Oh, well, actually, my bets so far have been absolutely rubbish, so... I said it was going to be five there and five there, didn't I? And that, that turned into a, a passel of falsehood. Um, four is in one of those cells. That's not very interesting. Four is in one of these. Does that... What about six, then? Six is, can't be here by Sudoku. It could be the double digit. The trouble is six can be maybe not there, but it could actually be here next to a doubled seven or eight. And it could even be here, next to ones on both sides, or a double digit there, and ah, it could even be there as the double digit. Oh, okay, that... Why is four suddenly a good number? Over the... Uh, at the beginning of the puzzle, six was the important number. Now suddenly it was four down here. Oh. Just notice there's a seven, eight, nine triple in this column. So one of those is definitely seven, which must come between two and one. That's quite interesting. Now these are from three, four, five. They can't be seven, which is in one of those cells. They can't be seven, eight, or nine, which are a triple. They can't be six. They can't be two and one, which must surround the seven in this column. Oh, they can't be four, because four is in one of those cells. That's a three, five pair. That's weird. Okay, this isn't three. Okay, now let's think about where three is in this row then, because it can't be in those cells. Ooh, it can't be here, because it would need to be next to a genuine eight and nine in those cells, and we can't have nine there. So I reckon three is down to one of those two places. Now, this place, it can be, if that's an eight, and that is a doubled seven or six. So it's possible three is there. What about here? Here, there's no problem with it in the cell itself, but it puts a three into this group of cells. Which is interesting, and maybe not impossible. But it is quite difficult. I don't know, I suppose they could be doubled four, three, eight. Or, if you had three and four in those cells and a doubled big digit in between them, okay, it is possible. Bother. Ah, oh, come on. That was a really interesting three, five pair. I wish it was I'm tempted to do the corner marking across boxes because three is going to be really powerful in one of these places and I want to know which one. Is it here? 
That would have to be next to 8 here. You'd go 3, 8. That would be a 1 or a 2. This would be a doubled 6 or 7. Can't, I can't I can't rule it out. Oh, these can't be threes. Let's do that. One of these is a four, isn't it? It's not this one, because there's a seven either side of it. So it's either a four here with a nine there, or a four here with a genuine nine below it and a doubled eight above. Now hang on, 4 is either here with a genuine 9 there, or 4 is here with a genuine 9 there. So one of these is a 9, and the other one is a 7, and that is a 7-9 pair. And that is a doubled 8, and that gives us the doubled 8. That means this is a doubled 7, and this is a doubled 6, and this is progress. That's weird. Why didn't I see that before? Now, this is doubled 8 is 16. Yeah, I still don't know which way the 4-9 pair goes. I don't think it resolves anything about 1 and 2 either. That's really annoying. But it gave me this 7 and 6, and this 6 might be worth something. This is... I was going to say, this is now low. But actually, it could be a 7 because that would be just far enough away from doubled six. So this is seven, three, two, or one. This one, if that was a seven, this would have to be a one. But if it's high, it's seven or eight. Oh, this is useless pencil marking. Ah, oh, so frustrating. That was such a good discovery. I mean, it's probably... It might be the more obvious discovery that I've missed for the longest, in a way, but pleased to get it. Six is in one of those cells now. Uh, one of these is a doubler, so... Hmm... Oh, and we've had doubled five, six, seven, and eight. Ah, we're not getting a big doubler in here, because we can't have double nine. So the only way to get four in now is to use a doubled four. Which is in one of these two cells. Right, whichever one it's... Oh no, I don't know. I was going to say whichever one it's in, we know the alternation up here. But I don't think we do, because doubled four could be next to... Oh yeah, doubled four is only eight. Yes, that has to be next to a low digit. So these are low. We do know that. Whichever one is doubled four. These are... well, that's a high value. And these have high values, but one of them is doubled four. So this is one, two, or three, and that's a triple. And actually... oh yeah, it could be three if this was eight and doubled four. <laughs> i.e. it had the value of 8 on both sides. Oh, that's so freaky. What's this? This is not 9 or 8. This is 6 or 7 by Sudoku. So that's 1 or 2. Um, come on. Is that the doubled... Could this really be the doubled... Oh, no, it was... Which one was difficult? It was difficult for this to be a 3. That was difficult. Because that would need doubled 4 and 8. This would be 7. And that would be 3. Ah, oh, something. Something's, something's trying to break through here. I can't quite see it. 
one of these is doubled for. So in the in the puzzle, we would have a doubled four, a doubled five, six, seven, and eight. The remaining boxes would have to have doubled nine, one, two, and three in. That one can't have two or three. Ah, oh, come on, I need to get this line. I need to know, oh look, six is on the line somewhere. Six isn't in those cells. Or that one it's on the line somewhere come on how could it be in these it could be there with a one here then this would be two this would be three that would be eight six one double four two seven that could be right but six can't be here because it's next to two genuine digits. So it's either 6, 1, then these, oh, I don't know. This is a 1, 2, 3 triple, obviously. I mean, I can tell that 8 is either there next to that 3 or in one of these. <sighs> Come on. Come on, think it through. Ah, it's so interesting. Just looking across the grid to see if there's any further clues anywhere. I still think three in this row might be slightly more significant than I'm expecting. Oh, come on, Mark. Come on. <laughs> I can't do this. Um, if this is a three, this is four and eight. Let's just think Sudoku. Oh, it doesn't work. I have to put six and seven into this column. Not just six. I have to put six and seven into this column. That cannot be a three because it would need four and eight there and I couldn't fit them all in. Right. That's not a three. That's a one, two pair in the box. This is a three. That's an eight. This is a seven. That's a six. That's one. That's not one. In fact, that's also not three in the column. That's two. That's one. That finishes column one. This is a two now. Now these are a seven, which needs to be there, and a doubled four. These are six, five, and nine. This is a three, eight pair, which can be filled in. That's almost like I get to do some Sudoku finally. This is a one, two pair, and that tells me where three goes in this row finally. There, next to an eight. This one is genuine, so it has to be low, one or two. This is a seven in the row, and this is a four in the row. That's a nine, that's a seven, this is not four, that's two, that's one. Most of column nine suddenly finished. I feel like that was a ton of brilliant progress, and I'm very happy. Um, this is so interesting. Now, I've still got these doubled numbers. Right, this cannot have a one, two, or three. This has a doubled nine in it. Actually, there's a six in one of those cells by Sudoku as well. That's really weird. So the doubled nine is there. The doubled four is here. I have a doubled one, two, and three. This can't be the doubled three. So there's a doubled one or two in one of these cells. These are from six, eight, and nine only. There can't be a doubled one in this box. Okay, I'm still going to have to go slowly to figure out where one, two, and three are going to be doubled. Um, this six, nine pair, is that doing anything? Not really. That is a four or a five. These are from three, four, five. These are from four, five, nine. Oh, look, I've got a seven looking straight across at that cell. So we've found the doubled four. Um, 
we've found a seven. We've colored the, well, we're going to color those green. Now this, this has got the doubled nine. We've got a one, two, and a three. The three can't be here. The three is doubled in one of these cells. And somewhere in here, there's a doubled one or two. Now, that is not a doubled one, two, or three. Well, hang on. Well, no, it's not a doubled three because there's a three looking at that cell. So I'm talking about the relationship between these two. That is not a doubler. Therefore, it's a genuine high digit. Uh, yes, I haven't been coloring these ones in blue and orange. That is a genuine high digit, six or eight, must be. Could be six, which is a pity in a way. Um, there's a seven in one of those cells. One and two are in this group of cells. Two can't be there. There's a seven somewhere here. There's an eight in one of those. Anything else very clear? Well, there's a three in one of those. One and seven are in that group of cells. That's just pencil marking to pass the time, really. I need another insight, and it's probably going to have to involve these. These thingies, these German whisper lines. Now I'm not doubling much in the remaining, the double nine is up there. Weirdly, despite being the most helpful sort of digit in terms of creating a crazy value, double nine does not appear on the German whisper line at all. Now, double one, two, and three, they may have to be kept off the whisper lines. Somewhere down here, there is a doubled one or two in one of these two cells. If it was here, I don't know, I don't think that really does anything. Come on, come on, we're getting there now. There's such a lot of lovely progress a moment ago. I'm almost sad that it's ended. Um, eight, one, seven, three, two, four. So let's think about this maybe. Ah, let's think about this digit being a three. That's what I'm going to think about. If that digit was a three, I'm going to leave out of account for a second that it could be a double digit itself. And the only way that could be is if it was above a one. But if it's not doubled, it's going to be next to a digit that can't be 9, 8, or 7, or 2, or 3, and can't be doubled. So it cannot be an undoubled 3. Now, can this be a doubled 3? It would have a 1 here, an ordinary 1. The double two would end up here. There'd be a doubled one here. I think it could work. That's in fact, look, if that was a if this is a one, this digit has to be a six. This C's nine, eight, and seven. Oh, this is really weird. Well, so just out of Sudoku digits, this can be one, two, four, five, or six. The only one of those that could be doubled is one or two. So the value of this cell is somewhere between one and six. And this has to be a German whisper move apart. And the value of this cell is also from well, even fewer, one, four, five, or six. 
and the only one that can be doubled is a 1. So the value of these two cells have to be 6 and 1. That's all you can do in them. And that's a genuine 6 and a genuine 1. You can't double the 1. So those are genuine cells. This is a doubler. It's the only place left in the row. This is a doubler. It's the only place left in the box. This is a 6 and a 1. So let's get rid of... That is a 6 and a 1. That just is. Now, weirdly, that doesn't tell me, or does it? It doesn't, it hasn't decided on the three. It's, gosh. But a one six pair makes that an eight, and this a five. These are a two and a four, but it's only two that can be doubled. So that's the doubled two. That four places eight in this box. Let's keep going with this. This is yielding something. Uh, we need a doubled 3 in this box, because we can't have a doubled 1. That's got to be here. There it is. This is a doubled 1 down here. There's a doubled 9. We now know where it is, right there. These are green cells, and my colouring is finished. Right, 6 here. This one is a doubled three is worth six, so that's a one. Wow, look at that crazy German whisper. Six, one, six. There are the values on it. We've got all the doublers in the, in the grid. That's become a two. This is one. Ah, we're going to finish now. We must do. I mean, there can't be any mystery left. It's just finishing off now. But my goodness, this has been a brain fryer. Um, right, three, eight, two, nine, six. Oh, what's become obvious? I can't see what's become obvious. There's a three in one of those, there's a four in one of those, and five or six elsewhere. Four, six, one, three, eight, this central box. Two, that gets placed here. That can't be a seven, that is five or nine. That two ends up here in box eight, and one is there in the same box. And that one comes up to the top, and we place it in box thingy. 382196. These are from 4, 5, and 7, and one of them is a 7. One, six, four. These are from, that is 5 or 7, this is from 5, 7, or 9. These had better unwind, or I'll get very upset. Oh, I've still got this. I've got a doubled 2, so that can't, sorry, a doubled 1 makes 2, so this can't be 6 now. Oh, that is so beautiful. Um, this is six in the box. That takes six out of those cells. Three, four, five, triple gives me a nine. Um, that six. Let's look at the row. What can this be? Five or nine? That is a chocolate teapot quadruple of the classic variety. Now, what can doubled one be next to? Not four. 63821, not 4, not 5, 7 or 9, but we've suddenly got 5, 9 pair in the column, so that's 7. These, that is 5 or 9, so this is 4 in the box, that gives me 4 up here, that gives me 5 there, 7 there, 5 here, come on, keep unwinding, can't have a 5 there. There's another chocolate teapot wonder. Um, eight is telling me that's a nine. Eight, that's going to tidy up these bottom three rows. What a puzzle. I'm loving it. Loving it. Nine sorts out six and nine. Seven and five. Four, six, three, five, three. And if I'm right, there we go. Just under an hour. <sighs> Brilliant stuff. Happy birthday, Atrio. Enjoy your cake. I might have some cake now to celebrate getting that puzzle done. I found that hard. Oh, look, I haven't quite completed my colouring. In fact, what I'm now going to do is take out the blue and orange colouring. There 
there we go, and put in the last bits of remaining green colouring to complete red and green. Outlay for the puzzle. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again soon on the channel. Bye for now.